Hi guys, well today we're going to be checking out a tiny little board from ASRock. This is the Z690 Phantom Gaming ITX TB4. ASRock has produced this board under previous chipsets and it's been quite a popular undertaking for them. And so as you can imagine with this new Intel Z690 chipset, it is the most capable mini ITX that they've brought to market. If you're considering a move over to Intel's 12th gen and are wanting to utilize small form factor, then this could be the way to go. TB4 may have less features than a full-sized ATX board, but it still brings in PCI Express 5, DDR5, a stack of USB 3.2 Gen 2 on the back panel, as well as a quick charge port. Now you guys can pick it up for around 300 in the US, 340 in the UK, and 650 in Australia. And so it isn't cheap, but mini ITX boards are something of a niche, and the options for this type of board are few and far between. Will this one be worth considering? Let's find out. Before we begin, today's video is brought to you by ASRock. Okay, before we jump in and have a look at the board, I've removed the board from the packaging. This is the box that our TB4 arrives in, usual sort of thing from ASRock. And on the back, obviously the features there and the tech spec. But inside is what I want to show you because this is the bundle and what we get in terms of those accessories. So we've got the antenna, which is for the Wi-Fi 6E, two SATA cables, two Velcro straps for cable management, a keycap if you've got a mechanical keyboard, two screws for your M.2, a driver and software CD, and then the documentation. So we've got the quick installation guide and then a manual there for the software specifically. Okay, so here we have PG ITX TB4. With it being an ITX based board, ASRock has squeezed as many features into the small space which is on offer. You can see though that we have a black PCB and the theme really lends itself to combining black, red and silver. Though when you do attach a graphics card and a CPU cooler, you may not be able to see much of the board itself. Now, although the board has gaming in its name, there is no integrated RGB lighting, but we do get two headers. One which is RGB and the other addressable RGB. TB4 conforms to the mini ITX form factor, so if you're looking to build a small form factor PC, then this is the size you want. Being a Z690 board, we're using the new Intel LGA1700 socket, which is designed there primarily for 12th gen processors, so it's not possible to use previous gen CPUs on this board. Now, some coolers which are designed for older Intel sockets may or may not work with this board. Often companies have an upgrade kit for the new socket, so be sure to check that out. Now, in terms of the power delivery, we have an 11 phase design with DRMOS and smart power stages. Covering the VRMs, we have two significant heat sinks, which are joined with a copper heat pipe. If you want to know what the VRM cooling is like on this board, then be sure to check out our web review, which is in the description. Behind the top heat sink, we have the CPU power, which is just a single eight pin socket. Unlike other Z690s, which have a dual 8-pin setup. Now in terms of the headers, there are a total of just three which are all at the top of the board and those are all 4-pin PWM. Would have been nice to see some sort of adapter which kind of you know, extends the fan header support with there being only three available. And as mentioned previously, we've got the two headers for RGB lighting. Moving on to the memory, this is a DDR5 board and we have support there for dual channel up to 64 gig and up to 6400 megahertz. These slots are all reinforced with steel and they have the gold contacts. And in this area, we also get some quick reference LEDs there in the corner, which are for boot, VGA, memory, and CPU. They just help you to troubleshoot if you run into any problems. And right next to that DDR5 section, we have a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. We also get a USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 header. And of course, that gives us that Type-C connectivity at the front of the case. Moving on to the storage, we have three SATA 36G ports for any SATA-based devices. And we have two M.2 slots, which are both Gen 4 ready. And one of them, the one on the back of the board, board even has SATA functionality and then the primary slot on the top side of the board has a corresponding heatsink. If we take a look at the expansion area we have just one PCI Express slot which is PCI Express 5 ready and it supplies the full 16 lanes from that CPU and again we have the steel support treatment and extra anchor points on this slot. There isn't a lot of space on this board for audio, but tucked underneath that rear I.O. cover, there is a Realtek ALC1220 codec, which is pretty much a standard now on Z690 boards. And we've tested it out, it offers brilliant audio quality, and with ASRock's solution, we get Nehemic audio. 
And finally, we arrive at the rear I.O. panel for all the connectivity. The rear I.O. shield there is already pre-attached. And so in this area, we get the HDMI and DisplayPort 1.4, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. The bottom one there offers fast charge, nine volts at three amps, and that is 27 watt. A USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 port, a single USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, 2.5 gig ethernet, that is via the Killer E3100, clear CMOS and BIOS flashback buttons, antennas for the Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2, and then last of all, the audio jacks with that optical out. And so a really good selection of ports there considering the size of this board, and that should really offer a good balance of features for most users. All right, well that is the Z690 PG-ITX TB4. This is quite obviously a tiny mini ITX board which is purpose built for those wanting to shift into small form factor type builds. And being able to tap into the features that uh, Intel's latest platform offers on such a small board is brilliant. We may have a cut down version of a full sized ATX here, but we're still getting two PCI Express 4 M.2 slots, dual channel DDR5, USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 for the front panel, PCI Express 5, Wi-Fi 6E, and a a load of ports on the back including a handy power delivery charging port as there are only a few compromises and we're still able there to tap into a great feature set. The only thing I would say is that the existence of such a product like this and with it having that niche factor it isn't cheap at uh, 300 in the US, 340 in the UK and 650 in Australia. Now if you guys are wanting to know how far this board can take the 12900K in terms of the overclock, if you want to know how the VRM temps are on this board and how TB4 compares to other boards, then be sure to check out our web review. A link for that will be on the screen and in the description. Please let me know what you think of this board in the comments. Hope you enjoyed today's video guys. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.